Installing the neck of your guitar is a fairly involved process. First, you've got to make sure that the neck angle is right for the string height. Next, you've got to make sure that the alignment is right so those strings are headed straight for the bridge. And then once you get all of that dialed in perfectly, you're going to glue it all down, never to be removed again. And that's the problem. In some number of years, depending on the condition that the guitar endured, that bridge is going to raise just slightly higher. That 160 plus pounds of pressure is going to put stress on the wood. Eventually, you're going to end up with a bridge that is going to sit slightly higher than where it was before. That makes for a terribly uncomfortable guitar to play. You're left with really only two options. You can sand down the saddle, but only so far. The other option is a major repair called a neck reset. Uh, for that to take place, you've got to unglue the neck, meticulously sand the angles back into there to correct the string height, and then glue it all back together. Even in the hands of a skilled luthier, there are still risks. Taylor Guitars are the only major manufacturer to adopt a standard adjustable neck. Now, other manufacturers have released a few models here and there, but kudos to Taylor for making that a standard option across their entire line. Now, as neat as that option is, it still requires you to remove the neck in order to make an adjustment, and you have to buy their custom shims in order to do so. There's also a company in Canada called Riversong Guitars that has this crazy innovative solution for this continuously adjustable neck. It's neat, but I wasn't really looking for that level of flexibility. Uh, it also required them to make some fairly significant changes to the structure of the body of the guitar in order to bring that to life. Now, the idea of adjustability isn't new. I did some research and I found these designs dated all the way back into the early 1800s. It's the same idea that just with the twist of a wrench, you could dial in the perfect level of string height and neck angle. No removal, just a quick adjustment. I found some builders that showed their designs, but not how they actually put it together. In this series, I want to take some of those ideas, mash them together, and see if we can prototype a fully adjustable neck. The main concepts that I'm going to draw from include those from Mike Doolin, David Schramm, and Garrett Lee. Now, I've got a couple of core design principles that I want to adhere to as I go through this process. The first one is I want the full adjustment, but I don't want to see that adjustment screw from the outside. The next one is I want to make sure that I have a rigid heel on the neck of the guitar, so I don't want to go through a bunch of material removal there in that area. And then the last one is I want to limit the visibility of a gap on the fingerboard extension as it extends over the guitar. And I think that last one is going to be the hardest one. Okay, let's get into the fun part. Let's talk about the design. Now, what we've got here is a two block setup. We've got a top piece and a bottom piece that are essentially into an L. These are both gonna be pieces of hardwood. Typically, I would build those out of mahogany. We've got a pocket in the top and a pocket in the, in the bottom one. The idea here is you're creating a recess that we can move the neck in without seeing then the edges of the neck as we uh, make the adjustments. If we take a look at how this is all going to fit together, we're just using a couple of furniture bolts here. The top one is just a straight bolt that's gonna go through, uh, the, uh, through the block and into the neck. Uh, this bottom one is gonna be a little bit different. This bolt is gonna be cut short just a little bit. We've created a recessed pocket for that bolt to fit into. On top of that is a wave washer that's gonna sit on the head of the bolt. Uh, and then we're going to put a cap on all of that. We're creating what we call a captive bolt setup. When you bring all this together, that wave washer acts as a little bit like a spring so that you don't have any movement with that bolt. And we compress everything together. That gives us the ability to make adjustments on that screw and kick that heel up or down as needed to make the adjustments. So as we bring that all together, you'll see then uh, that we've got a full assembly. That bottom nut or that bottom bolt is locked into place. As we come around to the other side, we're going to add in a couple of metal pan head screws. As we install these screws, you'll see that they are directly parallel with that top bolt. That's important. That's going to give us the ability to tighten that top bolt uh, and bring the neck together against those two pan head screws and they will now become the pivot point uh, for the entire neck. Uh, as we take a look at what the neck looks like, 
Uh, this is the way that I construct my necks. They are a stacked heel block, and each of those heel blocks are carved on the CNC even before we put it together. It gives us the rough shape of the heel so we don't have to do as much carving. Uh, and then what you see that we're adding here is this metal rod uh, with two uh, threaded holes that have been put through there. That's going to function as the support rod. We're essentially uh, creating that bolt and barrel setup uh, with this rod. That will feed all the way through and then at the very top you'll see a couple of grub screws. Now those grub screws are what are going to anchor against uh, the pan heads of the screws that we were just talking about. When those fit together, they're going to lock and create that pivot point because there's a, it's an Allen head on the top of those grub screws. And so it'll fit inside. It'll kind of be like a recessed fitting in there. That will lock the neck in place, create the pivot, and also give us the ability to twist them one direction or the other and adjust the alignment left and right on the neck uh, so that we can adjust the alignment of the strings. So as we bring all of that together, You'll see those, uh, then those two grub screws at the top and now our support rod in the center. Uh, and we bring that all into that block. It'll fit nicely and square inside of there. Uh, and then as we take a look at the side, then what's gonna, what you're gonna see here is if we've done everything correctly, we should get roughly two degrees of movement. Now we only need a downward movement on the neck because uh, over time, it's, the bridge is always going to lift, right? It's because of all that string tension. So we only need to go in one direction to be able to compensate for that lifting of the bridge and lower the string height. Two degrees of movement is a lot. That would be a massive amount of material to remove on that bottom of that heel block if we had to do that as part of a neck reset. So I'm hopeful that when this is all said and done, that fretboard on the top, we're gonna get all the movement that we need just with a few twists of a wrench. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you are as excited about the design as I am. In the next episode, we're gonna get started on the actual build. We're gonna see whether all of this design work actually functions in real life. We'll catch you all next time.